the the, uh, the event that, that I'm remembering in, from, you know, we've had a, a number of different conversations, but it's something that I mentioned in the jazz history class that I teach because uh, a lot of times we look at the kind of society that we have, and even though it's not perfect, it's it's a long way from the way that things used to be in this country. And we're not talking about a hundred years ago when things were, were very much divided here. I mean, just for our age differences, we're sitting in, in a room where many of us listen to the same music, like some of the same artists, have some of the same experiences over the last 20 years. But the first word that I learned was color, because that's a water fountain I had to drink out of. And if I didn't drink out of that water fountain, my parents could go to jail. So as a three-year-old, I had to learn that I knew how to spell color before I knew how to spell my name, which I call cold color red, because that's how I broke the word down. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, distinctly, my father took my sisters and I to see President Kennedy speak at Rice Stadium, and he talked about uh, being on the moon by 1969 and all that. And I remember going, uh, afterwards having to go to the bathroom and run into the closest bathroom that was there when I came out. And my dad took me and said, you can't go in here. And he walked me down to the other end of the stadium where I saw Cola Red and used that bathroom and drank out of that water fountain. And we had just heard the President of the United States speaking about a different type of society, but that society hadn't gotten to Houston, Texas yet. Well, in the 1970s, someone at, at Rice University found, they were doing something to move some sign, and they found that word painted over a bathroom at the stadium, and it had never been painted over or taken down. And the school made a point of saying that, you know, that when the sign was taken down, they discovered this, and it was a reminder of the way things had been, and they painted over it. But I, I remember seeing that in the newspaper, and looking at that, and remembering that that's the bathroom that I had gone in, in the early 70s. But, but I had been in graduate school at that school at some point in time since then, which you guys see right there. You know, so it was, it was just one of those kind of things that there, there are parts of our history that everybody does need to know so that we are aware of certain growth, certain improvements, or if things slow down, that we need to be aware that things are slowing down. You know, the fact that that was never painted over means that it's still there. You can put a sign over it. You can still paint over it. But it's still there. So that means that that, that mentality is still present somewhere. Because whoever put that sign up saw a means of hiding it, but not eliminating it. You know. And, you know, sometimes in that class, when I talk about that to students, I think they feel shocked because in their mind, we're all in the same room, but we all have a, but I have a very different background from some of those students that what they perceive to be a short age difference is not historically that short of an age difference at all, man. It's, it's really huge. But what, uh, growing up in a situation like that taught me, and my, and, and my parents had a lot to do with that, man. They said, you know, this is, you know, we're, you're in a limited situation, but you are not limited. And just because things are like this, that doesn't mean that you love everybody that's black and hate everybody that's white. You know, because that is just as ignorant as segregation itself. So I, I don't really necessarily feel that I was deprived by growing up in that environment. If anything, it made me just more aware and appreciative when things changed. You know. Uh, but it, it provided, a, a, that, that kind of situation provided a very unique outlook on life, man. And one of one of the part of that was uh, that uh, in seeing the kind of changes that were made because people were willing to uh, move beyond their their individual fears, their uh, move beyond their comfort zones, challenge things because they were wrong, and be willing to live or die as a result of their actions, man. I mean, that's a pretty big commitment. You know, uh, when you when you say this is wrong, and and I'm going to stand up and tell you that this is wrong, even though you have the power to knock me right back down and get away with it. You know, uh, as a country, all the people in this country at one point in time can identify with that mentality somewhere, 
because all of us have come from somewhere else in terms of our ancestry our background and people came here with that with that type of hope so you know that's that's what is that's where that's what it's brought for me and and I and I, I remember judging a jazz festival Lionel Hampton and the teacher told me she says well you know some of my kids are young and they might ask you if you're Lionel Hampton because they've never seen a black person before in their life. You know, there's some towns around yeah. here where there are no black people. So don't be surprised by the questions that you get asked. And you know, <laughs> that was kind of different. I thought she might say, well, you know, my kids are young and they can't play all the notes on this chart. But, but um, that was refreshing to me, man. If, 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 if I'm the first black person somebody sees, then that's cool. And if that means that I, I share something with them with that color line, kind of breaks down or that barrier breaks down, that's fine, man. But I think I embrace situations like that. Good